What is up? My name is Erin Bees. I am a mom. I am a wife. I am somebody that spent 13 and a half years in multi-level marketing. I was actually very successful. I think that that's important if you are brand new to my channel to understand that I was very successful. Uh, but my team struggled. My team members struggled. And so after 13 and a half years, I decided to leave. I focused on my healing journey. And here I am sharing all of the juicy details on all of the companies, which there was six of them, you guys. So if you're brand new, I would love for you to subscribe. I would love for you to turn on the bell notification so you don't miss anything. I would love for you to comment. I love the interaction. And if you are not new to my channel, welcome back. Glad to see you here. So make sure that you follow me on social media. I'm the most active probably on Instagram. So I will link that here in the, in the video description. There it is. But here is my, uh, my handle on Instagram. Okay. I feel like one of the, one of the most common requests that I get are for me to share my experience on the companies that I've been a part of. So that's exactly what we're going to do today. I do want to mention that anything I discuss in this video is based off of my personal experience. It is a part of my story. And just because it's fact for me doesn't necessarily mean that's going to be fact for somebody else. This video is made for educational purposes. So let's dive in. We're going to talk about the, a company called Love Winks. Have you guys heard of this company? By the way, let me know in the comments if you have or if you haven't. Uh, they're essentially another romance company, and I'll give you kind of the history of how I came about it and all of that good stuff, the history of the company. We're going to talk about the president. We're going to talk about all of the things. So buckle up and let's go ahead and dive in. So in order for you to understand, I got to give you a little bit of the history of, of where I came from in multi-level marketing. So I did join my first company in 2007. That company was called Slumber Parties. Uh, I was with that company for roughly seven years. And by the way, my calculations on time may be off. Just bear with me, okay? I mean, it is what it is. But um, Pure Romance actually purchased slumber parties in January of 2017. So, or 14. Hold on. I left Pure Romance in June of 2014. So January, 2014 was when slumber parties was purchased by Pure Romance. Um, and I, in my opinion, did not like the vibe. There were a lot of things that we were promised. You know, there was going to be a leadership line where we could call in and, and have everything, you know, all of our questions answered. And there was supposed to be kind of like an onboarding team. We, I could never get through. This is just based on my personal experience. I had a really hard time getting questions answered. It just felt very kind of bait and switch like. You know, like, oh, well, if you do this, if you join this, here's what you're going to get. But then once you join, it's like, oh, but now you have to do these things. Um, I think that there was some ulterior motives for Pure Romance, in my opinion, buying slumber parties. I'm not really going to get into that today, but let me know what you guys think. <laughs> and so in June of 2014, I ended up leaving Pure Romance. And I had no intention actually at that time of joining another multi-level marketing company. Uh, but after I resigned, and I can't remember if I asked the question or if I got a message from the now president of Love Wings. I don't recall. I would have to go through my messages, but um, I'm having a hard time finding that because she actually has me blocked. The tea is hot. Anyways, <laughs> uh, so in August of 2014 was when I actually joined Love Winks. And right after that, we were sued by Pure Romance. I had to take a year off. We ended up losing the lawsuit, which was why we had to take the year off. Um, and I joined again in 2015. I did resign in January of 2017 uh, that I was able to find the emails. And my final bonus check was $277.92. Why am I even telling you that? Well, one, I remember hanging on to that like, oh, I got to have this money. And 
now I look back and I'm like, God, that was so silly. $277 I was hanging on. At the time I was working two businesses or two, I don't want to call them businesses, two multi-level marketing companies. So I was doing Love Wings and I was also doing Modair at the same time. And I was leaving Love Wings because I just wanted to focus on Modair at the time. Um, by the way, let me know if you want me to do a video on Modair. I do have some things planned. I've got some notes written down, but let me know if that's something that you guys would like to hear about, especially with the uh, with the lawsuit. Because yeah, I got sued by Modair. I was listed as a Jane Doe again. So <sighs> let's all just take a deep breath, okay? Because these lawsuits, these multi-level marketing companies use as a defense mechanism are just ridiculous. Anyways, uh, I think that it's important for you guys to know that the the president of Love Wings, her name is Jamie Lamp, and we'll talk about her a little bit more later, but she was in my upline in slumber parties. She was actually three levels above me, so my sponsor, her sponsor, and then Jamie, and she uh, is not, she's the president of Love Wings. Okay, that being said, let's dive into some of the history of Love Wings. Uh, they were incorporated March 6th. 2014 uh, by Ron Anderson. Ron Anderson, and I know this from personal experience, is one of the investors of the company. Uh, and I'm just, as I'm thinking about the dates of this, you know, that Love Wings was created, um, I just wonder if they had been on the hunt for somebody to kind of take that spot within the multi-level marketing community, somebody to be the president, or if they were working with other companies, or were they interviewing people for this position? It just makes me wonder some of the timing of this. I don't know. Maybe that's just me. Let me know in the comments. Um, allegedly, there are two other investors that are connected to Ron, who owns Topanga Canyon Place. Um, and O Natural Life LLC. He's also associated with nine different companies and is listed as the president of Love Wings as well. We're going to get into why I think that that is kind of significant here in a little bit. Tony Santoro is also one of the other investors. He, again, is associated with Ron and other companies along with Love Wings. The third investor is Scott. I can't remember his last name and there was not a ton of information on him online um, as I'm hitting my mic. Cool. Um, but there are three male in investors, uh, that are also, two of them are listed as the president of the company, which I find really interesting. Why is this interesting? Because I remember when I was joining Love Wings that it was presented like this was Jamie's company. It was, and by the way, Jamie Lamp is a public figure. So that is why I am saying her name. She is the president of the company. She is a public figure. Um, and everything that I express again in this video is my opinion. So let's talk about Jamie, shall we? Uh, Jamie is a former teacher. Uh, she, again, was in my upline in slumber parties, three levels above me, and I will tell you that she was instrumental in having people sign over to Pure Romance from slumber parties, and in fact, when all of that went down, there was an event, I lived in New Mexico at the time, there was an event in Albuquerque, and they called it a town hall, and Chris, the CEO of Pure Romance, came in, and there was a bunch of people that kind of came in, and the whole state of New Mexico uh, came, and they were like, well, what is this? pure romance situation and what's going on because we had always heard that pure romance was the devil now i understand why maybe that's for another time but anyways um i remember looking at jamie we were sitting in the front row chris i can never pronounce his last name the ceo of uh, pure romance was up there speaking and we were kind of in a break and she looked over and she goes, it's okay, Aaron, go ahead and sign the agreement. It's a very good thing. Sign the agreement. Um, it's it's going to be okay. This is a very, very good thing. Well, of course it was a good thing because she had people that were joining her from another company. She was going to be making money, which is the theme in multi-level marketing. So of course it was, a, this is a very good thing. Well, okay. So silly me trusting people. Uh, that probably did not deserve my loyalty, in my opinion, uh, signed the agreement. And I ended up resigning just a few months later because I was like, this doesn't, this does not feel right. Um, 
the thing that I find really interesting is that allegedly Jamie has no money invested in Love Wings, but her official title is the president. Um, president in a company is one level just below CEO. But then when you look at kind of the big picture of this and you see that there's two other investors that are also listed as the president, it makes me think that they have kind of like this board situation going on. So even though with Love Wings, she presented it and still kind of does, that it's her company, that she's the one that makes all the decisions. The details show me that there's probably some kind of a committee where they make decisions together. I'm sure she has her input, uh, but it makes me feel, and I, it makes me feel like she was just hired for that position. I don't know. Let me know what you guys think about that. I just find that really interesting. Um, and again, this is all just based on my opinion. I think that this was an opportunity for her. I think that she is just like any other leader that any of us have had any interaction with in multi-level marketing that uses that kind of family relationship facade as a way to manipulate people to do what she wants. Because when I look back at that scenario, at the um, leaving of Pure Romance and joining Love Winks, and then the lawsuit and certain things being shared and other things not being shared. And then the fact that Pure Romance won the lawsuit makes me think, well, I wonder if if there was an opportunity for her to go right to the source for some of these products and uh, use that and use those relationships and kind of manipulate the situation. And that's how she was hired. I don't know. That's just a thought. Let me know what you guys think. Um, I think that she is just like any other leader that has their own agenda in multi-level marketing and she calls everybody family and she, you know, the, the relationships and all of this stuff. But if you're not doing what she doesn't want you to do, she's probably going to write you off and not really talk to you anymore. Just my opinion. Um, when I did tell her that I was leaving Love Winks and that I was taking Modair full time, it was not received very well uh, to the point where I told her I would be waiting for my check in the mail because I was concerned in my resignation later, letter and, and all the conversations leading up to that, that she wasn't going to send me my check for whatever reason. So that's in my resignation letter. Anyways, um, another thing that I really still really bothers me to this day is I had a lot of team members that were in the El Paso, Texas area. Shout out to all my El Paso people um, and friends and customers and all of those things that I've known over the years. Um, I had a lot of free products and we'll talk about the comp plan here in a second, but you get $50 in free product per thousand in retail sales every month. And so I had a lot of free products. Um, that I had accumulated. And when I was leaving, when I was resigning, I asked Jamie over the phone if she would give the El Paso team members that I was that I was leaving, if if they could use those free product credits, if she would just send it to them so that they could use it for giveaways or hostess credits or, or you know hostess gifts, prizes, that kind of stuff. I wanted them to have it. And she gave me her word that she was going to do it. Um, and that was not done. And I I get the tax part of that, but if you give your word to somebody, you should probably do it. That's just my opinion. Um, I definitely do think that she presents Love Winks like it's her own company, um, but I do, I do feel like, in my opinion, that she was hired to be the face of the company because of the connections that she made through slumber parties. And again, just my opinion. So let's talk about some of the things I want to... The big question that you get in multi-level marketing is, do I have to recruit to be successful? And the very thought that uh, you can be successful in any multi-level marketing company without recruiting is, is absolutely crazy. One of the biggest defense mechanisms that they use is, oh, well, this isn't a pyramid because we have a product. Well, that's actually not the definition of a pyramid scheme. A definite, the definition of a pyramid scheme is when you're really making money off of the recruitment part of the comp plan. That's essentially what a pyramid scheme looks like. So even though there's a product, if you look at the money that you're making from the sale of the products, 
look at any company, any multi-level marketing company, you're probably making a tiny bit of commission, but huge bonuses when it comes to recruiting. That's kind of a sign for me that I'm like, oh, well, there you have it. Okay. But you know, they're going to say, well, we have a product. Why do I keep hitting this thing? We have a product. So, you know, it's, it, it's not a pyramid scheme. Well, the recruiting part of it is the problem, right? So I was browsing through the Love Wings website and I saw that they had an FAQ and an FAQ, a lot of times in multi-level marketing is a way to kind of, it's a way to kind of answer objections but without really answering the question. So there were two things that really stood out. One is the first question, how much money can I really make? And this answer is, <laughs> this answer is hilarious. Anyways, the answer is your money-making ability is unlimited with Love Wings. You decide how much you want to make by the number of parties you do. This is truly a flexible and rewarding career. And we're going to talk about the comp plan in a few minutes. So just bear with me. I just... The fact that they, they didn't really answer the question, I think, is, is kind of hilarious. The second question that really stood out, and of course, I'm going to link all of the sources in the video description so that you can go check it out and stuff. Um, second question is, do I have to recruit? And this answer, this answer is classic. Okay. Recruiting is not mandatory for Love Wings consultants. However, by simply sharing this rewarding career opportunity, you can earn amazing additional profits. The sensational, the sensational Love Wings compensation plan will reward you beyond your wildest dreams just for sharing the opportunity. Will it really reward me beyond my wildest dreams just for sharing the opportunity? So, okay just for sharing the opportunity, it's going to reward me beyond my wildest dreams. No, that, that, that's probably not accurate because just because somebody joins doesn't mean that they're going to go to work. And it is a business model that is meant to reward the top 1%, the people that got in you know, at the beginning, the people that have a large following. It's what we're seeing. All these influencers are, are jumping on board with some of these multi-level marketing companies, and they're taking advantage of their followers that join them because they liked them. It's manipulation. It's, I think it's ethically gross, and that's just my two cents. This is no different. This is no different. They didn't answer that question. It was well, it's not mandatory, but if you really want to take advantage of the sensational Love Wings compensation plan and be rewarded behind your wildest dreams, you'll want to share the opportunity. Is it really an opportunity? A 99% fail rate where people are losing money? I would show you the income disclosure statement, but they don't have one. There is no income disclosure statement available for Love Wings. To me, that's shady. If there's a multi-level marketing company and they have no comp no, no income disclosure statement, that is shady, in my opinion. Show me the numbers. Show us all the numbers, but they don't have one. Okay, let's talk about the comp plan. I feel like I need to take a drink. Hold, please. The comp plan. Okay. There are three different kits that you can purchase. Obviously, I'm not going to show the kits because there are romance products, and I'm not going to show that here on this channel. Okay. That being said, they range in value from $195 to $495 with a retail value of $400 to $2,000. Uh, these kits are what you purchase in order to have products to show at your parties. What, by the way, why are we doing parties when we are in a global pandemic? Why are we doing events, multi-level marketing companies, when we are in a global pandemic? I just feel like that's very socially irresponsible, and it shows that you're just money hungry because we have to keep our people indoctrinated and, and believing in what we're doing. Yeah. Anyways, once you're enrolled, once you've purchased one of those kits, you start off at a 30, 35% buying discount, meaning if you buy $100 worth of product, you're getting a 35% discount on those products. Once you get to $800 in sales, you get a 5% increase of your buying discount. So the more you buy, the more your buying discount increases. Once you get to 2000 in personal sales, you get another 5%. When you hit senior consultant, you get another 2%. Wow, senior consultant. This is really interesting because this is where the recruiting piece comes into play, because in order to hit senior consultant, you have to have at least one consultant under you. 
So there is the recruiting piece of the comp plan, the sensational Love Winks comp plan. Um, and you also have to have at least 300 in monthly personal sales in order to grab that additional 2%. So what are we at? 35, 40, 45, 47. Okay. And just remember on the FAQ, it says that it's not mandatory. But if you if you really want to take advantage of the sensational Love Wings compensation plan, you're going to want to share the opportunity because you want to be rewarded beyond your wildest dreams, right? Okay. Then you have manager. Manager is another 2% increase. I think that we're up to 49%. Uh, on your buying discount, you have to have three or more consultants under you and 1,200 in personal sales and 2,500 in total team volume. So your sales, your team sales, everything combined in order to get that 2% uh, increase. Then director is another 2%. And I think we're at, I don't know what we're at, 51. Four consultants you have to have, plus two of them have to be a senior consultant, meaning they have one team member under them. 2,000 in personal volume, excuse me, 6,000 in team volume, and then you're a director. Senior director, I think that's, I think I was a senior director. I'm pretty sure, senior director. Um, and I would love to like look at an income disclosure statement that talks about what a senior director makes. I think that that would be pretty pertinent to this video. But senior director is another 4%. So you're at 55% buying discount. So uh, 2,000 in personal volume is what is required monthly. 20,000 in team volume. So yourself and all of your team members, but you've got to have seven consultants and three of them have to be managers. And managers have at least three people under them. So in order for you to take advantage of this sensational comp plan, you have to recruit. So Let's change that, love winks. Let's go back and say, do I have to recruit? Well, if you really want to make money, yes, you have to recruit. Like I would respect it more if some of these MLMs would just answer the question like that. All right, then we have national direct, director, excuse me, and there's no increase in the buying discount, but you do have to have that 2,000 in personal volume, 60,000 in team volume, and you've got to have three directors or higher. Director, again, is when you have at least four consultants under you. And there you, yeah. And then the, the volume piece. Executive director is, there's no increase again in the buying discount, but it's that same 2000 in personal volume, 200,000 in team volume. And you've got to have three senior directors. Um, yeah, three senior directors that are below you. I am going to show you, I'm going to put the chart, I don't know what side it's going to be on, but I'm going to put the chart so that you can see uh, some of these numbers that we were just talking about. I think that it's important. So if you need to pause this and check it out, that's totally cool. But this is the chart that you can see everything broken down. And you can see, you can see that you get paid more to recruit. So in order to take advantage of this sensational comp plan, you are going to have to recruit. And in my opinion, that is the definition of a pyramid scheme. Like you can't just sell the product and make money. I mean, you can, but you're gonna be 35%. If you really want to be rewarded, you know, uh, beyond your wildest dreams, you're gonna have to recruit. It shows it right here in the chart. So I don't know, let me know what you guys think about that. What I'm really kind of excited to talk to you guys about is the real cost of a party, because this is something that, until you live this, you're, they're not going to tell you this. They're not going to tell you all of the little pieces. And in fact, I used to have this form called the after party summary that I created because I was like, I just sold a thousand dollars. By the way, my biggest party, my biggest party was a $3,600 bachelorette party. It was absolutely bananas. Um, it was absolutely crazy. Anyways, the real cost of a party. So I'm just going to break it down kind of like this. Um, I was doing a lot of parties in El Paso, Texas. And so I lived in Alamogordo, New Mexico. So depending on what part of El Paso in, it was an hour and a half drive one way. So three hours travel time. The parties typically take three to four, sometimes even five hours, depending on how big the party is. So you have that as far as time, but gas to and from, 
maybe you're somebody that is a single parent. And so, um, you know, you have to get a babysitter. So let's, let's talk about that. Like, you know, if you're gone for five hours, imagine what a babysitter is going to cost you. Okay. I don't know what the going rate for a babysitter is these days, but think about that. Um, you are required by the company to give them a, a hostess gift. And it, that does come out of your pocket. I'm looking at my notes here because I actually forgot to put something in here. So bear with me, but you have to give them some kind of a hostess gift. Um, a lot of hostesses will get like a hot heart massager or a hot heart warming pack, I think is what Love Wings calls it. And they're required to get 10% of the party sales as hostess credit. It's what they get. It is written in their policies. These are the two pieces that they have to get. That 10% of the party sales comes out of our pockets or out of your pockets, however you want to word that. It would come out of my pocket when I was a part of it. Um, that adds up really, really quickly. And a lot of times this is just, this is the bare minimum. You know, when you are, when you are doing parties, you want your hostess to be telling all of their friends about you and why they should book a party with you. So even though this is the minimum, sometimes people uh, would, would do, you know, double hostess credit. So that would be 20% of the party sales. They would have these really extravagant gifts and like it, it just, all of that comes out of your pocket, but nobody talks about that. Nobody says, hey, before you join, before you click that submit button and buy your kit, just know this stuff is all going to come out of your pocket. Then you have the cost of some of the business supplies. So for example, I used to use lap boards. So I would take three ring binders and I would cut the, the ones that had the pocket on the inside and I would cut the three rings out and I would have two lap boards so that people could look at the catalogs and all kinds of stuff. Um, I would carry around anywhere from 10 to 20 of these lap boards in the lap board is going to be a catalog for everybody to take home with them that costs money. It comes out of your pocket, order forms, and also black bags for those that do carry stock and, and want to, you know, they got to have something that, he, that they can take home without being see-through. Right. So, um, all of that costs money, a pack of catalogs, which is 25 catalogs costs $30. The black bags come in a pack of a hundred for $23. And then the order forms are like eight bucks for a pack of 25. So every so often you're going to have to order those and that comes out of your pocket for, from a, a party. And the frustrating part about that is that, I mean, you get raked through the coals essentially if you're not having a thousand dollar party. If you are having, you know, a party where it's like $250 and you've promised this hostess, you know, double hostess credit. Well, okay, that's 50 bucks. Then, you know, you have to replenish the catalogs and the order forms, and the black bags and the hostess gift and like all of this stuff. You're probably not making a ton of money, especially if you had to drive to the party, especially if you had to get a sitter. This is a perfect example of the business costing you money to actually participate in it. Then you have the different games throughout the party. An icebreaker game, there's a prize for that, comes out of your pocket. A booking game, there's a prize for that, comes out of your pocket. And that could be like a double hostess credit or whatever that they won't get into the next, until their party, but it still comes out of your pocket. Then you have different recruiting games like, oh, you know, ask me anything about my business. And, and you give tickets or whatever for asking questions about the business so that you can identify the leads the prizes for that come out of your pocket. Then on top of that, one of the, one of the things that I think uh, costs the most, and if you've done, you know, pure romance or slumber parties or love wings or anything like that, where you carry stock, there is absolutely no way you can carry anything and everything in stock that people are going to want. There's no way. So you're always going to have back orders. So I've broken down all of the things that cost you money by doing a party. Well, then you have back orders. So let's say that you send your party guest home with two thirds of their order. Well, depending on the size of uh, and the weight of the products that are on back order, you might have to send that priority, uh, which is eight plus dollars now. That also comes out of your pocket because when you are ordering to have it on hand, you're paying shipping and tax, you're receiving it, you know, and you're charging them, they're, you're charging them shipping 
when they placed the order. And I can't tell you how many times I had to explain, well, I paid for the shipping in order to have it here for you to go home with. So I don't make any money off of that part. But then when you have something that is back ordered and you have to mail it, that, you know, five to eight plus dollars per order comes out of your pocket. So can you see how all of this kind of adds up? They don't talk about this stuff. Then there's the, well, if you sold it, you need to replace it. So, you know, you're making 35% or 35 to 55%, depending on what rank you are in the company, you know, you're making a little bit of money, but let me just tell you when you're first starting and you're only at a 35% buying discount and you have to replace the stock, and then you have all of these hidden costs that they don't talk about, you're hardly going to be making any money. There were so many parties when I was first starting where I made zero money and it actually cost me money to go and do them. This is the stuff that they, that they don't talk about. So let me know in the comments below what you think about that. Then let's talk about the real-time requirement. I think that this is something that multi-level marketing companies, they're like, oh, you can work in the cracks of the day. And you guys, I'm saying this because I used to say it too. But when you are doing a company like this, where you have you know, um, the back orders to process and you have to fill the lap boards and you're labeling products. I used to label all of my products because God forbid they run out of shaving cream. I want them to have my information so that they can just text me and, and reorder or go right to my site and reorder, you know? So I had to label all of the consumable type products that they're probably only going to order maybe every three to four months. If that, like, let's just be honest, you know? And then you're having to do hostess coaching, right? So you're, it's just basically constantly staying in contact with your hostess so they don't cancel last minute or so that they don't, uh, oh, well, you know, let me invite everybody 24 hours prior. And, and you know, you're, you're, you're trying to find out how many people are coming to the party. And she's like, oh, I only got like two or three. And then you're like, I got two or three. Great. Fantastic. Right. And there's some consultants that'll tell you, oh, well, I rock a two to three person party. Yeah, you probably do. But it's going to require a heck of a lot more time than any of us want to, to put into this. And this is something that they are not talking about. Then you've got to boil your hot heart massagers or a warming massage pack is what Love Wings calls them. You got to mail out your back orders and then the time driving to parties, you know, um, especially if there's market saturation in your area, you're going to want to tap into some of the different areas that maybe they haven't heard, which is going to require you to drive, or maybe you live in a big city and you got to drive to the other part of the city. Like it's crazy. So it's going to take you some time. And hostess coaching is something where you're either mailing something, you're sending an email, it's phone calls, it's text messages. All of this stuff is going to require tons of time. I used to mail these oversized postcards that gave them all kinds of hostess tips. I'm sure none of my hostesses ever really read it. They were like, oh, this is really cute and put it on the counter and that was it. So it was just a, a, a time suck is really what all of this is. Um, but it's not anything that people talk about. It's not anything that they're talking about. And so we're going to talk about it here. Then we have company events. I've talked about company events with different companies. Some companies, you know, charge for events. Some don't. Some you just have to get there or it's a, a, the, the cost of a ticket is minimal. Other companies, it's, you know, $249 plus for a ticket. And it's clear that they're probably making money off of that. Everything in MLM is is about money. It's about the numbers. It that it is what it is. Uh, Love Winks did have their convention last month. I do wonder, in a global pandemic, if masks were required or COVID tests were required. I don't know. Uh, I didn't see any information. I did a little snooping. I did some Instagram hashtag snooping. Uh, saw some pictures of some people that I knew from previous companies at the airport where the majority of people were wearing a mask. Uh, one person was not. I find that really interesting because this one person is very influential in the company and happens to be Jamie Lamp's best friend, who I think, in my opinion, has been built the entire time. We'll talk about that maybe a little bit later. Uh, there is another event in October or November that is coming up. I wonder, are COVID tests going to be required? Will uh, wearing a mask be required? I don't know. I just, I don't think that these companies have any business putting together any kind of in-person events right now because of being in a global pandemic. I feel like it's socially irresponsible. Make the events virtual. But here's the thing. If they make it virtual, 
then they're not going to have the same kind of indoctrination that they're wanting. They want you to go to these events so that you get hyped up and, you know, you, you get all these dopamine hits and then they can offer you like, oh my God, we have this new products coming out. You know, if you get them today, they're discounted or you can get a discounted ticket for the next event or they have swag or they have all of these different things or, you know, events like meet the CEO or meet the president. They have all these things and it all is hype around making sure that you still believe in the company. I can't roll my eyes hard enough, you guys. I can't do it. So I think it's very socially irresponsible. I think that they're putting a lot of people in jeopardy. I don't think in-person events should be happening. But again, they have to keep, you know, indoctrinating their people. So there are, I've heard some really actually terrible things from people that I'm going to, of course, keep anonymous for their safety uh, about uh, leadership events, specifically with Jamie, things like where you were asked to stand in front of your peers, your fellow leaders, and explain why you're a terrible leader. I think that there is no reason that you need to break people down in order to build them up. There are different ways to lead. And sis, that's not it. That's not it. I think that that is vile, just my opinion. So in closing, don't join an MLM. And especially in my opinion, this is definitely not a company that you want to join. The hourly wage is not going to be worth your time, your energy, or your gifts and your talents. Uh, you are just a number to an MLM company. And if you're in a current MLM, because I know there are different chapters to being in an MLM. Some are just going to be like, I'm not ready to hear this. And so I'm not going to listen to anything the anti-MLM community has to say. And that is okay. There's some that are like, you know what? I've never really listened to the other side. Let me just listen. There's some that are like, oh my God, I've been in a cult. There's going to be some that are like, how do I get out of this? Let me get an exit strategy together. Then there's going to be some that are like, oh my God, I finally left and now I can breathe. I can do whatever I want. And then there's those that are ready to speak out. I've seen this very clear pattern. And if that is you, um, you know, let me know in the comments because I'm curious because I can definitely see that in myself. I can see that in people that are around me, used to be around me. And it's totally okay. It's where you're at. And I respect that. Um, if you're currently in an MLM, this is for you. I want you to look at a profit and loss statement for your business. I want you to write down what you have made and I want you to write down what you have lost. What have been your expenses? Look at the two numbers, put together a profit and loss statement for your business and look at it in black and white. When I looked at my income for this last year, and I talked about this in one of my previous videos. I don't remember if it was the um, leaving MLM after 13 and a half years or prove it. I don't remember which one. But when I looked at it and my tax representative was like, you made 10,000 net last year. I made $10,000 as a rank six in prove it because of all of the costs it took to run the business. Look at a profit and loss statement for your business. If you are in an MLM and you're like, you know what? I've never really listened to the other side. That's where I would start. Just look at the numbers. Look at the money that you're making. Check it out. You don't even need to tell anybody. Just do it for you. Just know where you are at, right? If you need help getting out of an MLM, please feel free to reach out to me. I just left July of this year, so I understand what you're going through. I understand what you're going to go through. I understand the smear campaigns. I understand the fear management. I understand all of that stuff. And let me just tell you that you are somebody that assigns the value to other people's words. And if you need help getting out, please don't hesitate to reach out. Uh, I would love to know what company you guys would like to have me cover next. This was a company that I spent some time in. Um, this is a company that um, I can definitely look back and see the manipulation through the relationships. I can definitely look back and it's just grimy in my opinion. Okay. So if you loved this video, feel free to give me a thumbs up. Uh, I love all the comments. Thank you guys for interacting. I would appreciate if all of you subscribed, share away if it is something that you feel called to do. And again, 
I love and respect you guys too much to watch you fall uh, prey to any MLM. My name is Aaron Bees. Thank you for being here and I'll see you on the next video. Mm -hmm.